Proposition 31, State Budget, State and Local Government, Initiative Constitutional Amendment and Statute. Plain language, create California budget reform and add accountability measures. Before I start, let me clarify beforehand that the term state government refers to Sacramento, as they call it, or the government of the entire state, i.e. the California State Legislature. The term local government refers to county and city governments, i.e. Los Angeles County or the San Francisco City Government or the Fresno School District. These are local governments. What does it do? Prop 31 makes it so that each California budget lasts for two years rather than creating a new budget every year. It requires that the legislature set aside a part of the two-year session to review and evaluate the effectiveness of public programs and describe how their budgets meet various objectives. It also imposes guidelines on how state and local governments evaluate the effectiveness of their programs as well. Prop 31 makes it so that any time the government spends over $25 million, it has to specify how it is going to come up with that money, either by raising revenues or cutting spending elsewhere or both. And likewise, any time the government wants to cut over $25 million in taxes or fees, it has to specify how it's going to replace that money, again, either by raising taxes or fees elsewhere or by cutting spending elsewhere or both. It gives the governor the power to make budget cuts without the approval of the legislature if the legislature doesn't act. Due to the state constitution and federal spending requirements, however, the governor would not be able to cut school spending, debt payments, public pension payments, and some health and social service expenses. These expenses account for the majority of the California budget. The governor would only be able to cut spending on smaller parts of the budget, and the legislature could still override these cuts with a two-thirds vote. So if two-thirds of the legislature get together, they can say, shut up, governor, we don't want your budget cuts. But if they can't get a two-thirds vote, then they just have to shut up and take it. Prop 31 requires that all state and local governments set performance goals and that they receive performance reviews. It requires that all bills be made available to the public three days before the legislature votes on them. This does not include public disaster bills and terrorism bills. They basically don't want a disaster destroying some city for three days while Californians read the bill and engage in vigorous debate. It gives local governments the power to change the way state-funded programs apply to them unless the legislature or state agency vetoes the change within 60 days. This basically means that if the state government makes a law that doesn't make sense for a particular local government for whatever reason, then the local government can adjust the law to make sense for their particular county as long as they keep the spirit of the law intact. And again, the state government can still veto any changes the local governments make. Fiscal Impact It is estimated that this proposition would decrease the amount of money the state legislature receives in sales taxes by about $200 million each year, but increases the amount certain local governments would receive. Also, Prop 31 will cost a little more in compliance for both state and local governments as they gear up to deal with all the new paperwork and goal-setting procedures, though these extra expenses would moderate over time as the process normalizes. Long story short, this proposition has a lot of sorted elements in it, but the implied theme here is fiscal responsibility and accountability. This proposition aims to make it harder for the state legislature to overspend, easier for the governor to cut state spending on his own without the consent of the legislature, and it attempts to make all the government programs have some sort of accountability and evaluation mechanism to ensure efficiency and validity. It also gives the California public three days to read any bills before the legislature votes on them, and it attempts to give local governments more control over the way they use their tax money. As a part of this plan, the state government will give money to local governments that create business plans for their government. Again, a local government can be a city, county, or school district. Any local government that creates a plan that addresses how they operate and how they serve the public is eligible to receive extra funding from the state if Prop 31 passes. So that wasn't too short, but that's the best I could do on this one. The proponents of Prop 31 say, In good times and bad, California has long had a state budget deficit. Politicians overspend, typically resulting in waste, abuse, and overborrowing. Budgets are often based on the influence of special interests rather than the outcomes Californians want to achieve. An auditor estimated that California could have saved about $1.2 billion had the auditor's own proposals to reform operations and improve efficiency been enacted. Prop 31 proposes a real balanced budget and creates hundreds of millions of dollars every year that could better be used for schools, law enforcement, and other community priorities. They say it generates savings without raising taxes or costs or adding new government bureaucracy. It requires transparency and stops the state from passing budgets without public review by requiring a three-day evaluation period before a vote. 
Prop 31 imposes fiscal oversight and constraints on new government spending by requiring the government to demonstrate where any new spending or tax cuts will come from, thus lessening the government's temptation to overspend. Prop 31 requires performance goals for public programs and mandates that these programs receive regular evaluations. Having a two-year state budget prevents politicians from passing short-term budget gimmicks and instead forces the legislature to think about long-term fiscal solutions. It provides incentives to local governments and schools to focus on improving education and increasing public safety so that they can receive the state funding for their plans. Finally, they say Prop 31 will return tax dollars to local governments and shift more control and flexibility from Sacramento to cities and counties so that they can implement laws in a way that makes sense for them. The opponents of Prop 31 counter this, saying Prop 31 doesn't balance the budget, improve performance, or increase public input, as it claims. Instead, it adds new complicated rules, restrictions, and requirements to California's Constitution. It makes government more cumbersome, more expensive, and less effective, costing tens of millions of dollars per year for additional government processes and bureaucracy. It's so confusing and ambiguous it will take years of lawsuits for the courts to sort out what it means. Prop 31 leads to lawsuits, not reform. It allows local politicians to override or alter critical state laws they don't like, undermining protections for air quality, public health, or worker safety. If Prop 31 passes, it will be almost impossible to cut taxes or increase funding for education without a vote of the people. It prohibits tax cuts unless other taxes are being raised or programs are cut, and prevents increases in school funding unless taxes are raised or other programs are cut. Prop 31 will shift $200 million from education and other vital functions to fund experimental county programs. This is not the time to gamble with money that should be spent on our highest priorities. It prevents spending on education, even if the money is available and even if the state is running a budget surplus. Performance-based budgeting is more of a slogan than anything else. It's been tried many times before. The one thing it will do is raise costs. So I appreciate the spirit of this law. I can understand why the no on Prop 31 people say that it will increase bureaucracy to an extent. It will create a bit more paperwork and frustrating political details. That's what usually happens when people make these rules that you have to set performance goals and performance objectives and blah, blah, blah. It's like in schools where someone at the top decides, we need to make, say, diversity a performance goal. Diversity is our new performance goal. Then they make every teacher in every department outline how every class they teach promotes diversity because that's our goal. Then you have math teachers writing up, well, we've been making students use as abacuses because that's a wonderful, diverse Chinese tool for adding. And then you have music teachers writing, well, every day we listen to a couple tracks from Missy Elliott to promote diversity of music. And we scheduled a mariachi band to come and play in the courtyard. And then you have all this nonsense going on because someone somewhere decided that this was a performance goal and now everybody under them just wants to keep their job and the funding for their program. So I get it. Prop 31 will create some new hassles and possibly a little more expense. I also thought it was funny when the no on Prop 31 campaign said it prevents spending on education even if the money is available and even if the state is running a budget surplus. <laughs> a budget surplus in California. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, a budget surplus. <laughs> but I like that Congress would now make two-year budgets like they do in some other states. That will, <laughs> that will keep them from passing rinky-dink budgets with all those tricks that pass debt and unpopular disasters on to the next year. All that time and money wasted and the hassle of all the fighting and arguing over the state budget will only happen every other year rather than every year. I like that Prop 31 makes it harder to overspend since every expenditure over $25 million will have to be justified. It allows the governor to make reasonable cuts when we have legislative gridlock, not big dictatorial cuts, but reasonable cuts just to get the budget through. And I really like that it allows more flexibility for counties to manage themselves in a way that makes sense for them. I don't like the idea of some politician in Sacramento telling a city in Imperial County how they should be doing things. Plus, each local government will be accountable to provide a plan on how they will be spending their extra money. That way, they at least have to think it through, and that's good. Most people know that NorCal and SoCal can be pretty different places, and I think each area knows its own needs better than some politician who may never even have been to the area in question. A three-day wait before passing bills also makes sense, too. It seems, in my opinion, that the people opposing Prop 31 are doing so because they want to be able to overspend and micromanage the entire state from Sacramento. Now, I'll tell you, I'm not totally sure that this will work exactly as intended, but I think it's a good effort and I'm willing to give it a try. So I'll say yes on Prop 31.